One of the many ways to affect blood, blood pressure is to regulate blood volume. And this is primarily the job of the kidneys, although not only the kidneys. If to understand this process, I want you to imagine that this is our circulatory system and this is the set point. Okay, this is my my goals to maintain my blood volume at this level. Okay? So that's what this is, my set point. And so if my fluid drops below that, so let's say you've been working out in the hot sun and you've been working out all day and really haven't been drinking enough water, and so now your fluid volume is down this much. Okay. There are two ways that we can correct that process. One is we can consume more fluid. This would be our input and this would be through our digestive system. So we would be drinking, we would be, it's food too, to restore that fluid volume. The other process is the output. Now the kidneys can regulate output, but it's not the only thing that affects output. We also have to worry about sweat and we really can't control or regulate that much. If we're hot, we're going to sweat, we're going to lose, I mean, that's a reflex process, we're going to lose water through the sweat. And then we also lose water through our respiratory system. And so as every time we breathe out, respire. Yeah, every time we breathe out, we are going to lose air. I mean, well, of course we're going to lose air. We're going to lose fluid because we saturate the air as we bring it into our respiratory system, we saturate it with water and some of that water leaves with the air as we exhale. We also will lose fluid in our feces and yes, we do have some control on this. Um, it's not a huge amount, okay? But uh, you can imagine, say you get sick, you have diarrhea, then the amount that is lost in the feces goes up. So primarily then, this part that we can regulate the most easy is the amount that is produced by urination. And that's the job of our kidneys. To reduce output, the kidneys are going to reduce how much water makes it into the bladder. And so we can regulate that process to put either a little bit or a lot or somewhere in the middle. The process of urination is controlled on multiple levels. First, we have filtration that occurs in the kidneys through, through capillaries that go to the kidneys, special types of capillaries called fenestrated capillaries, and we'll look more at those in the renal system. And that fluid enters into the renal tubules. Most of it is reabsorbed, okay? Most of it is reabsorbed, but the amount that is reabsorbed can be controlled so that some of it will end up going into the bladder where it is excreted from the body and that percentage of it that makes it into the bladder will vary. There are several hormones that regulate this process as does the sympathetic nervous system. Those hormones, we've made note of them before, you've learned of them in the endocrine system, ADH, which stands for antidiuretic hormone, and antidiuretic reduces the amount of urine that is produced. And then we have aldosterone, which I'm going to abbreviate ALD, and that one causes sodium retention, but as water follows the salt, the net effect is again to reduce the amount of fluid that is that makes it to the bladder. Once it's in the bladder, it is excreted and we cannot reabsorb it. So looking at those hormones in the sympathetic nervous system process, sympathetic nervous system controls blood flow to the kidneys. So if I want the kidneys to process more fluid and remove that fluid from the body to lower blood volume, I will do that by altering my sympathetic nervous system response to control how much fluid will actually make it into the kidneys. Okay. And so we will have a chance to look at that a little bit more when we talk about the renal system. 
but the result of an increased blood flow, so we increase our blood flow to the kidneys, okay, that's going to naturally lower blood volume because our kidneys are going to be processing more fluid per minute, and if 1% of that fluid makes it to the bladder, well, 1% of 180 liters per day versus 1% 1 of 100 and 95 liters per day, you can see that there would be a difference and we would be removing more volume through urination. Antidiuretic hormone includes the f uh, fluid reabsorption, so we're going to move it out of the tubules back into the blood, and so that's consequently going to increase blood volume. And as we mentioned, this was actually even on your exam, the trigger for antidiuretic hormone release is usually blood pressure. Okay, so when blood pressure goes down, um, antidiuretic diuretic hormone is normally released in order to increase the amount of volume in our bloodstream and uh, allow that to impact our blood pressure. Okay, blood pressure. So a decrease in blood pressure causes an increase in ADH. So a decrease in blood pressure causes an increase in ADH, which causes an increase in fluid reabsorption, which causes an increase in blood volume. Likewise, aldosterone can be triggered by blood pressure, but it also can be affected by potassium levels and sodium levels, both in the bloodstream. Okay, so if potassium levels are high, aldosterone will be released because it causes the kidneys to secrete potassium, which means we're going to have more potassium in the urine. Uh, like our, with sodium, it causes the kidneys to reabsorb sodium, so we'll have less sodium in the urine and more sodium in the blood. Water follows the salt in this case, and so the net effect is that we're going to get fluid movement into the bloodstream, which is going to increase my blood volume. This next one, antinaturitic peptide, is released from the atria of the heart, and its process, it has the opposite effect of aldosterone. You're going to notice it's going to reduce sodium reabsorption. It's not completely opposite because it also reduces potassium reabsorption, but it blocks ADH release, inhibits aldosterone. So this one is designed to counteract the first two. On the exam, I'm much more likely to test you on ADH and aldosterone. Now, you're going to notice right here that this is a two-star concept. That's a for now. We are going to revisit this in the renal system, and it's definitely something you want to know because once we hit the renal system, it very quickly becomes a three-star concept. So all this really means is that on the exam, when I design questions, and I ask about the cardiovascular system, this has less probability of showing up there, but it's almost guaranteed, well, I'm not even almost, it is guaranteed to show up on the exam for the renal section.